Hey everyone, it's Curtis here and welcome to an On The Back Wheel video. In my last video, I talked about the upcoming KLX 300 and how it isn't coming to Australia or Europe. One of the main reasons it isn't is because the bike does not have an anti-lock braking system or as you may know it, ABS. In 2017, Australia passed law that all new motorcycles must have ABS. And guess what? That time is nigh, people. The legislation is coming into full effect this year and because of that, we're going to lose a lot of motorcycles. If you like what I'm doing, hit that subscribe button. It only takes a second and it really helps me out. The ABS legislation came into effect in November 2019. This brought Australia in line with Japan and Europe. Simply put, all new road registrable motorcycles must have ABS as standard. The new legislation was implemented based on research that states that ABS can reduce motorcycle related trauma by more than 30% and there was no kickback to this legislation. I mean, even in 2017, a large number of motorcycles already had ABS as standard. Where things do get tricky though is, as of the 1st of November this year, the legislation is being fully implemented. Why? Because the November 2019 date was only for new models, whereas the November date for this year is for all vehicles. What this means is, those bikes that haven't been updated in a long time or don't have ABS are on the chopping block. Unfortunately, the motorcycles that are most affected are dual sports, our bread and butter people. And there are some big casualties. To rattle off a few of the bikes that will be culled, there is the DRZ400E and SM models, DRZ650, Kawasaki KLX 250S, my bike, Yamaha XT250, KLX 150, and some agriculture bikes. And that's nowhere near all of them. There's also a fair few street bikes too. Probably the biggest losses here are the DRZ400 range, DR650 and the KLX 250S. The DRZs are still some of the highest selling bikes in Australia. They keep selling them by the buttload even though they're as old as the hills. And without the KLX 250, Honda is going to have free reign and sell so many ZRF 300Ls. Here's the thing though, there are some exemptions to the ABS laws. This means that some bikes don't need to have ABS, so we might not lose all of them. Adventure bikes must have ABS, but it can be switchable. It has to default to on every time the motorcycle is started. So that's why on your KTMs, Tenere's, etc., you have to turn it off all the time. But let's bring up the ADR legislation and see what we can find. Having a look, Enduro motorcycles and Trials motorcycles are exempt. What is a trials bike? Well, that's pretty self-explanatory. They are the funny little bikes that are made to go up rocks and hills, so we won't dig into that. What makes something an enduro bike is interesting though. Looking at the rules, an enduro bike needs to have a seat height of 900 millimeters or more, ground clearance of 310 millimeters or more, be 140 kilograms or lighter, and have no seating position for a passenger. Of the bikes that are listed earlier, none are currently classed as enduros. The only bike that could be is the DRZ400E. Looking at its specs, it does qualify. So Suzuki may have to redesignate from a dual sport to an enduro. So the DRZ400 may stay. The DR650 is pretty well stuffed. It can't be classified as an enduro because of its specs and it certainly isn't a trials bike. There is another exemption category though and some of the bikes might be able to sneak into that. Bear with me here because this one's a bit of a mouthful. If a bike has a seat height of 810 millimeters or more, 285 millimeters or more ground clearance, a 21 inch front wheel is less than 250 cc's, weighs 150 kilograms or less and cannot take a passenger, it does not need ABS. So that still rules out the 650, but the KLX 250 might sneak in with some very minor mods from the factory. Hell, I think they'd only need to remove the passenger foot pegs and it would be sweet. But considering they won't even put ABS on the KLX 300, I wouldn't hold your breath. What will be interesting to see is, will companies be updating existing models? Everyone is dying for a new DRZ400 or DR650 and if they're not allowed to sell them, their hand might be forced. And if you do want to buy a motorcycle that doesn't have ABS, I would check to see if they're bringing out an updated model, like the Honda Grom, for example, is being updated with ABS, or you might just have to snap up some current stock. 
in any case, you've got a little bit of time or hell, Suzuki might even announce a DRZ450. Yeah, right. So are there any bikes that you don't want to see go or you think should be updated? Let me know in the comments below. That's it from me. If you haven't, smack that like button and the subscribe button and keep it on the back wheel. Catches.